Hey everyone, welcome back. You know how much we love digging into common gardening uh, hiccups? Absolutely, those little mysteries that trip up even the most experienced gardeners. And today we're tackling one that's so common, giving your plants space to, well, breathe. Yeah, it sounds funny. We know plants don't exactly breathe like us, but hear us out. This deep dive is gonna be all about why giving your plants a little breathing room can make a world of difference. It's all thanks to our friends over at Gabariya Garden and Candles and Veden's Boutique, by the way. Mm -hmm. They did a deep dive into, you know, new gardener problems, and this one really stood out. Oh, absolutely. This is a topic that trips up so many people just starting out. Right, and they have this really catchy phrase for it. Want a fuller garden? Give your plants room to breathe. Which, okay, yeah, I get it. Plants technically don't breathe, but what does it really mean in the context of a garden? It's all about understanding what plants need to thrive. You see, just like us, they need food, water, and space to grow. And believe it or not, crowding can really cramp their style. So are you saying that cramming all my plants together is actually depriving them of what they need to, like, eat and drink? Exactly. Think of it this way. Plants make their food their own meals, if you will, through photosynthesis. They need sunlight to do that. Right. Photosynthesis. I vaguely remember that from, like, high school biology. Yeah. Something to do with sunlight, right? Exactly. So when plants are too close together, they're essentially competing for those vital rays of sunshine. The outer leaves might hog all the light, leaving the inner parts shaded and struggling to photosynthesize properly. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I have to admit, I used to be guilty of this. You get so excited seeing those seed packets with promises of a lush garden that you can't help but want to plant every single seed. Oh, I completely understand. We've all been there. But here's the thing, those seed packets, they're designed for maximum germination, not necessarily ideal spacing. That's a good point. I've never really thought about it that way. Think about it. They want to make sure you get as many plants as possible from that packet. But in reality, giving your plants some breathing room is what's going to allow them to truly flourish. So it's almost like giving each of your plants their own little apartment, right? Mm. Enough room to stretch their roots, soak up the sun, and just, you know, be their best plant selves. That's a great way to put it. Now, for those of you listening who already have gardens planted, you're probably wondering, how can I tell if my plants are feeling a little too close for comfort? Right. Because we don't want to be like eavesdropping on our plants' conversations or anything. Exactly. Luckily, there are some visual cues you can look out for. One of the easiest ways to tell is by checking if sunlight can reach the center of your plants. Oh, that's a good one. So, like, if the outer leaves are casting too much shade, that's a bit of a red flag. Exactly. Another telltale sign is overlapping leaves. Just like with sunlight, if the leaves are constantly bumping into each other and blocking out the light, it's a clear sign that your plants are craving a little more elbow room. Speaking of leaves bumping into each other, oh my goodness, my tomato plants last year. They were basically in a full-on wrestling match by the end of the season. Total jungle. Should have known better. We live and we learn, but you've just reminded me of another really important practice. Thinning seedling. Yeah, thinning. It's... It sounds kind of harsh, but I know it's important. It might feel counterintuitive after all, who wants to get rid of perfectly healthy baby plants, but trust me, it's for the greater good of the garden. Think of it like this. If you have a team of star players, you want to make sure they each have enough space on the field to really shine. You don't want them all bunched up, tripping over each other. Ah, love the analogy. Right, and it's the same for your plants. When you thin them out, you're giving the remaining seedlings more access to those precious resources sunlight, water, and nutrients. Okay, so we've talked about all the signs above ground, but what about below the surface? What's going on with those root systems when plants are overcrowded? Can they get crowded too? You know, that's such a great question and one that a lot of gardeners don't think about. You're exactly right. Roots need space to grow too. It's easy to forget about them because we don't see them, but those intricate root systems are just as important as what's happening above ground they're responsible for absorbing all the good stuff, water, and nutrients that your plants need to survive. It's like an underground city. <laughs> and I bet it gets pretty congested down there when all the plants are competing for the same resources, huh? Precisely. When roots are overcrowded, they can't access the nutrients and water they need to thrive. It's like a crowded subway station. It wouldn't be very efficient for getting around, would it? This has been so eye-opening. We've covered so much ground today, the importance of spacing, how to spot those telltale signs of overcrowding, and even the importance of thinning. 
Any last thoughts before we wrap things up? You know, just remember that giving your plants space to breathe is an act of kindness. It's about understanding their needs and creating an environment where they can truly flourish. So observe your gardens, make adjustments where necessary, and most importantly, enjoy the journey.